Hi, I've listened to many of your stories about people having their own encounters with these dogman creatures, but I have my own horrifying encounter to talk about. I've not shared it with many people. To be frank, I've gotten laughed at at least a few times sharing it, so I've always been a little apprehensive. But that was until I stumbled upon your database of encounters. You're kind of what I would like to consider the BFRO of Dogman Encounters, at least you and Vic Cundiff. You guys seem to be the go-to guys, so I shared my experience with Vic, and I'll share mine with yours. Back in December of 1994, I was driving on the actual road, the infamous Bray Road in Wisconsin, and I had my very own sighting. I was driving back late at night from visiting my girlfriend all day. I lived way across town. I won't tell my exact whereabouts, because I still live there to this day, and am not comfortable telling you where you live. I hope you can understand. But I had to ride on this road to get back home. I had work early the next morning, and due to the distance where my girlfriend lived, staying at her place that night, getting up and driving to work was just out of the question. It was too long of a drive, so I stayed as long as I possibly could, till after midnight. We kissed, said our goodbyes, and I set my sights for home, which would easily be about an hour and 15 minutes home. I'm just going to go ahead and assume that you probably don't know too much about Bray Road, so I'll fill you in. It's a pretty long road, very rural, fields and farms on both sides, a lot of brush and emptiness. Of course, it being December, a lot of the brush and foliage was kind of dead, but again, the entire emptiness of the road at night still feels pretty creepy. So I'm driving along the road, heading back towards the direction of my house. From where I'm at on Bray Road, I still have probably a good 30 minutes until I get home. Then, off to my right, I see this large thing stand up in the grass just outside the field of my headlights. Enough light that I could see a figure standing up, but not direct light because my beams were facing ahead of me, not off to the side. It was just from a small bleeding of light. This thing stands up and begins charging right towards my car. And as I'm driving, this thing makes it right to my passenger side door, grabs onto the handle, and yanks hard. This all happened within one fluid motion of time. I look over, scream, and react as this thing emerged from the field quickly and managed to get up to my passenger side door within a second or two. It all happened so fast. It caused me to swerve, and this thing disappeared. I'm lucky that my swerve was light and didn't cause me to flip my car or run off the road, but enough that this thing vanished. I have no idea what it was that attacked me. Because it was 1994, I wasn't aware of the whole Beast of Bray Road thing, not until much later. I was pretty much closed off during this time of my life, so I wasn't really aware of any of the things going on in my community. And I guess apparently, a lot of people around my area had been talking about this road and sightings they had but it wouldn't be publicized, at least not until later on in life. Anyway, the creature that I saw closely resembles what you and Vic talk about, a dogman werewolf-looking creature. In fact, if you Google dogman or werewolf, it doesn't look too far off from what you would typically see. Of course, it doesn't match the exact descriptions of much of the werewolves you would see in Hollywood, but it had a wolf's head, it was very humanoid, and had large, hairy hands with claws. From what I remember, it was pretty slender, had pretty wiry hair, and a very angry expression on its face, like it was upset that it could not get into my car, because my passenger side door was locked at the time, but had my passenger side door been unlocked, this thing would have had full access to me and my car, and who knows if I would have even made it home that night, or what it would have done. Why did it target me? Was it waiting for a lone car to drive by itself, and it targeted me? I still shudder at the thought of that. But what I did find out, about mid-2000s, when these stories started coming out, and I heard about it, I was just like, 
oh my gosh, I'm not alone. Other people have seen these things. And that really kind of sparked my interest in the whole cryptid world, because I realized what happened to me was not an isolated incident. Many people in my area had seen the same thing, although I'd never spoken to anyone locally about their own encounter. I've read and heard about many online. Now, skip ahead to about 2015, 2016, and dogman sightings seem to be exploding all over the United States. People coming from everywhere, submitting and telling their own stories. This is what really solidified my belief in what it is that I saw that night. But I was surprised to find out that there's so many depictions of these creatures. Some people report seeing gray ones, other people report seeing black or brown. Some are very lean, while some are reported to have a body like young Arnold Schwarzenegger. The thing that I saw was more slender and lean, but I only saw it for a couple of seconds as it was trying to break into my car. Because as I saw this, I panicked, quickly swerved the car, and it was gone. Which means that I can only assume that as soon as I swerved the car out of the way, it must have let go, and, for whatever reason, decided not to pursue my vehicle any further. But as soon as that happened, I did 70 or 80 down that road. I was not even bothering looking in my rearview mirror. I didn't want to risk it, risk seeing the face of that thing again. And after this happened to me, I didn't speak up about it for months. The first person I told about it was the girl I was dating at the time. The same girl that I had gone to the house of that same night. She just laughed at me, told me that I had probably snuck some shots of alcohol before driving. So, safe to say, we didn't last about another year after that. I also tried telling what I thought was a trusted friend, but again, I was mocked and told that I was probably just hallucinating. The same thing with another supposed trusted family member. Mocked, told I was hallucinating. So I gave up after that. Just decided that maybe I really was hallucinating, and I would keep my story to myself. Again, this is until about mid-2000s, where all hell broke loose on the dogman front. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my personal encounter story. I'm sorry it wasn't any crazier than this, but because of what I went through, I am now a dogman enthusiast and want to learn as much as I can. So, if you decide to read my story, which I hope you do, maybe some of your audience can leave some insight or some resources for me to check out. I'll be gladly checking your comment section. Have a wonderful day, and thank you for sharing all that you do. The first time that I saw it, I was just a kid, maybe only 13 or so. It was a Friday night, and I was with friends. We were all camping that weekend around the Manistee River in Michigan State. It was the summer of 2007, and not much was really going on. We were out of school and needed something to do. Telling scary stories was something we really liked to do back then, and they sure get scarier when they suddenly become real. That's what happened to me. My best friend Tom was telling a story about an old local legend about a creature that was half man, half dog. I told him he was full of it, but he swore to me, and they roamed the area. I didn't buy it. There was always lots of talk about the Michigan dogman and the beast of Bray Road, supposedly the same creature, but it was fun to learn of local lore, even though none of us really believed it. We all listened around the campfire as my best friend continued on with the description of the beast like man. Mary was roasting a hot dog in the fire. I had one too, but burned it as I was listening to Tom. Mary rolled her eyes and grinned at me as Tom went on with his description of the beast. Seven foot tall with bold yellow eyes and razor sharp teeth. The image that came to mind was scary but nothing prepared us for what would happen next. We all heard it at the same time. Something big was stirring in the brush across the campfire. A large, dark snout seemed to emerge from the brush. We thought maybe a camper's dog had gotten loose nearby. People did like to come to the woods in the summer. Yet, 
as it began to stick its head around and out, its upper body emerged. We all found ourselves staring at the very thing we had just been thinking wasn't real. The creature's canine-like head just looked like a husky, but the upper torso was that of a man, a very muscular man. As it crawled out in full view, I saw that it had the hind legs of a dog, complete with a long, bushy tail. The fur on its head was black, with a shock of white on the front. His tail had the same colorations. None of us really knew how to react. My friend glanced around in search of other signs of life. I guess he thought it was some sort of prank. That was my first thought, too, until I locked eyes with the creature. It was sort of like gazing at a wolf. There was wisdom reflecting back at me. It appeared ancient and extremely wild. There was no telling how this would react if any of us had moved. He slowly stepped closer toward us, and a scream had pierced the air, and I glanced around. My friends were all stunned into some kind of horrified silence, and I realized the scream had come from me. I watched as the creature snipped at the air the hot dogs. It seemed like it had caught scent of our food. It was seeming very deadly. Mary's jaw fell open. Just then, as this thing is staring at us, my other friend grabbed her camera quickly and snapped a picture. The flash startled the beast, and in the blink of an eye, it grabbed her hot dog off her stick, turned and ran. I yelled at Becky for snapping the photo. I had wanted to study it more. As terrifying as it was, I was also curious. If these creatures were real, how many of them existed? I feel weird admitting it, but I almost wanted to touch it. Like if I touched it, then I would actually accept what my own eyes were seeing. After that night, I devoted my entire life to learning more about the dogman lore and trying to find them. I've only had a few sightings since then, my friends still don't want to admit it, but I know the truth. I don't talk about it much, only to true believers because most people are afraid of what they don't understand. Also, I've heard of people who only think of dogmen makes appearances in Michigan, but that's just not true. I've been searching online and read about one on the outskirts of Indiana with the head of a German shepherd. That same year, I read about one in Wisconsin that said that it had the head of a Doberman. The body sounded like it was smaller than some of the others, and it did not have really much hair on its chest. Maybe it was some kind of cub. But the one thing they all seem to have in common is that strong upper torso. It always appears to be human. Either way, I know my story might sound far-fetched, but I plan to continue on with my research. The world deserves to know the truth about these creatures. I'm not full Choctaw blood, but I'm at least half. Enough that I grew up on part of the reservation, and I saw some things that I firmly believe nobody ever should. For one, if you believe in any of the folklore of my people, you would understand that there are many aggressive and bad spirits. I'm not just talking about like things like skinwalkers from the Navajo, for example. We have our own version that's very close, but what I saw is something far more evil, in my opinion. And if it wasn't for my grandfather being a medicine man, highly revered, mind you, I believe this demon would have taken my own father's life. And then, who knows, it could have came after or targeted my own family. The creature in which I'm referring to is what you people commonly call a dog man, but we have our own name for them, as well as a long history of fighting and trying to survive from these things' ruthless attacks. They've also been known to act very aggressive, especially towards more peaceful races of creatures, like Bigfoot, as you call them. After listening to many episodes of Dogman Encounters by Vic Cundiff, I've gotten a chance to learn quite a bit 
more than what just my own culture taught me and my upbringing, what these things are truly capable of, and just how malevolent and evil these things can be. I can give the exact whereabouts of this specific location, but I can tell you, it wasn't too far off from the reservation, and a place close enough to where my father and I hunted. In this very small section of forest lied a burial mound, where a very well-known man from our tribe in the past was buried. He practiced all sorts of foul magic, did a lot of damage to many families, and was buried in a mound along with other magic practicers, who they too were evil. One of the main reasons why they were buried a little ways away from the reservation. And just a quick side note, none of us, for whatever reason, came to visit this mound. It was just left as is. But the area in which my father and I hunted, a little bit away from the res, just happened to be right alongside here. And I never knew the exact whereabouts of this mound until my father and I had our encounter. It all started off with one day when my father and I went out into the woods by ourselves. We were tracking some game and hot on the tail of quite a few. It was very evident to my father that several large bucks, which would feed us for a good while, had come through this area. My father chose the tracks of the buck that he believed was closest, and so through a couple of more hours of tracking and finding, we were led to a more thicker, denser area of woods that my father did not recognize, but the tracks led right into them, into this thicker portion of forest. My father just stood outside, looking in, acting confused, and I'm wondering why he had never seen this portion of woods before. He said the woods must have changed, which I thought was weird at the time, but by some unforeseen force, my father and I felt drawn in, compelled to continue hunting this buck. Not even maybe 10 or 15 minutes in, now beginning to lose the tracks because the ground was shifting and changing. In fact, everything around us was kind of changing. Even the air. I started feeling very queasy, very uneasy in the pit of my stomach. And I could tell my dad was too. And he'd always been a very level-headed, very grounded person, usually pretty mono-expressive. But I could tell something was up, and something wasn't right. We then, both in unison, smelt this wild animal smell we had never smelt before. It was a creature that was unidentifiable. I've known the smells of just about every creature in the woods, but this one was different. It smelt more wild. My father put his hand out to stop me, gave me a look, and told me, We need to go now. It's not safe. Putting full trust and faith in my father, we turned around and we began to walk out. When we heard sounds coming in the direction of where we were walking, we had not even taken five or six steps, and we both hear a growl off to our left, behind us, and to our right, almost in a choir several of these growls going off at the same time, and they all sounded the same, very deep. I knew instinctually right there, and they were not a bear. They sounded, or reminded me, of a large wolf, due to the bass and the voice. My dad stops me, looks at me, and tells me, we have to slowly exit. If we run, they will chase us. They are trying to get us out of here. This is their territory. They're guarding something. They don't want us here. My father and I both hear these things approaching closer and closer. So he looks at me again, pulls out a large Bowie-styled knife, hands it to me, and tells me to head back. He'll stay here and keep guard. Of course, I looked at him like he was crazy, but he assured me he would be okay, and he'd rather have him getting hurt than both of us. So, again... Respecting my father, I listened, grabbed the knife, and I took off at a slow pace, making sure to not run and attract any more unwanted attention, but I kept glancing back as he took a stance, waiting for these things to approach closer and closer. 
Maybe five minutes goes by, and at this point, he's completely out of eyesight. I hear him begin to scream, and now I start to panic. Along with his screaming is accompanied by these horrific animal sounds, growling and howling and roaring. I thought for sure he was going to be dead, but then I see him running towards me as I'm almost near the exit of the loose patch of woods I was in. He's running towards me. His arm is tattered and ripped open. His chest has a huge gash on it, and he's pointing at me to go, go. So I listen. I turn around and start booking it. And as I do, not looking back behind me, I could hear a group of things pursuing us heavily. They were stomping the ground, moving oh so fast. Once we made it through the burst of the loose trees, my father collapsed on top of me, picked himself back up, picked me up along with him, and we kept going. I didn't dare turn around. Even my father told me to not look. They will target you if you look. So I listened. We made it further and further, over a tiny valley and a small hill, back to where we had parked. The entire trek took maybe 30 plus minutes. It was a little ways away. Needing desperate medical attention, he wasn't too concerned with himself, even though he was cut up and mangled pretty good. With how bad my father was beat up, I'm really surprised he did not die or go unconscious of blood loss. We get into the truck and I'm basically forced to drive my father back to the res, which is easily 20 plus minutes away. We go back into the res, and we go immediately to the medicine man that we know very well. He takes care of my father, patches him up, takes care of him, makes sure he doesn't die due to blood loss, and the whole time I'm pretty much silent. He looks at both of us and says, You went near those mounds, didn't you? I know exactly what these wounds look like, and I know what they came from. Of course, I remained quiet, because I wasn't quite sure what he was talking about. All I knew from my father is that we had gone towards a patch of woods I was completely and totally unfamiliar with, but I believe my father knew the area much better than I did. The medicine man, who, again, was highly revered among my sect of people, went on to tell me that that portion of woods was controlled and protected. There was a large burial mound not too much farther back there, where the wicked magicians were buried, and that a sect of wolf-like creatures guarded the mound to make sure no intruders would dig up the bodies or harm the gravestones, and even gave me the exact name of the creatures responsible, which I will not say, just for protection. So, I'll just refer to them as you know them, dogmen. He gave my father and I a very stern warning, and mostly scolded my father, who should have known better. But I guess even my father was unaware that he was in that patch of woods when he was. And even the energy in that overgrown patch of woods is different. There's something that keeps people and animals out of there, which would probably explain why the deer tracks disappeared. The overgrowth, even. The overgrowth wasn't natural. It was like a kind of overgrowth meant to keep others out of it, not that it had just been untouched for so long. It's hard to explain. The conversation didn't really last too long. He scolded me for a little bit, went quiet, and that was the end of that conversation. Once my father came to, after regaining momentary consciousness, he asked if I was all right, and we were able to leave shortly after, once the medicine man felt he was safe and patched up. After that, during the ride home, I had asked him what had happened. Is everything the medicine man told us true? He went silent. He went on to apologize, saying that he should have known better to take me into that section of woods that he ultimately knew was more than likely very dangerous and we were not wanted but he was determined to track. My dad is a very stubborn man, and I'm surprised that he took us in the line of danger, all for the thrill of the hunt. In return, we got attacked and hunted by something I had never seen in my life, something I'd only heard stories about from my own people. This was actually my first real experience handling 
something that I had never dealt with before. Still, on the ride home, because we were not supposed to go into this protected and guarded section of woods, my father informed me that we were now both marked, that because of what we did, these things would now pursue us both, come after our family, and do whatever they can to take us down. I was only 14 at the time of this happening, and have since had many encounters with these creatures. Of course, my encounters since then have not been near as frightening or horrifying. I feel like they like to keep tabs on me, wait and watch to make sure I don't slip up, do anything that I shouldn't, go into any territory that I'm not supposed to be in. We did something. I don't know if we woke him up or what, but I know for certain we were not supposed to step foot into there. That was sacred ground that we had disturbed. And for whatever reason, my father claims he knew that, but still, being stubborn, wanted to take that risk. I'm now 31, and by the time I had turned 18, my father, which I believe was a curse due in part to coming into this mountain's territory, came down with a rapid sickness and passed away within a matter of six months. That loss devastated not only me, but my entire family. And my family didn't really know about our little jaunt off by the burial mound, but I knew, and I knew solely that that mound and these creatures were very much so responsible. I believe that land is cursed, and I can only imagine what's in store for me, because even though I've moved off the res, I still have sightings of these creatures. I've not moved far away, of course, so these creatures are still within reach, I guess. Maybe I need to move further away, and completely abandon my people and their lifestyle, but those are my uproots, my upbringing. I don't want to just abandon it. I'll take having to deal with these things, since they're not exactly violent, and I can manage. I've gotten used to seeing them now. As frightening as their appearance might be, it's just a part of what I have to accept we dealt with. I don't know for you personally if you believe in curses, or cursed territory that is guarded by things that are not of this world, but if you do, Make sure you stay clear of them, and don't pay the price, like my father ultimately did, and like I am still paying for. First off, excuse my writing style for this story. I don't want it to come off as fictional, but I feel like I'm not really great at telling stories. So, allow me to tell it in this style, that it will hopefully be a little more engaging. I stand by my story, just so you know. Anyway, here you go. Oh, and before I forget, this was back in May of 2018. It all happened in the Republic of Congo. I had just graduated with a master's degree from Brazzaville, Congo. My friends and I had worked really hard for our success. We were all ready to celebrate and head out of town for a party as this type of success was a lot of hard work and an honor. I didn't drink, but my friends enjoyed it a lot, including my boyfriend. The party was on a Saturday. It had been eagerly planned and very long awaited. That previous night, I had pleaded with my father to lend me his old school minibus to drive everybody there. There were a total of six of us, three males and three females. Perfect couples, was the name of our roommates gave us. Everything was packed, and we started to head off. Just to be safe, I decided to bring my gun. The journey was long, and almost everybody had fallen asleep, except Kimaku, a big drinker and joker. He was talking, keeping me awake in the front seat, but eventually, I felt tired and dizzy after having driven for more than seven hours straight. I had asked him if he could drive. I mean, of course he could, but I was worried about him being intoxicated. He of course assured me that he could drive, and asked me what kind of question is that. He also asked if I had hurt his feelings. I didn't want to talk back to him and make too much noise since there were others already asleep. Out of exhaustion and drowsiness, I handed over the steering wheel to him. I didn't know it at the time that I was making a big mistake. 
after sleeping for only a few hours, my boyfriend woke me up, and I had no idea where we were. The place was dark, quiet, surrounded by brush. Nobody knew how to get there, even Kimaku himself. The worst part of it, everybody was pretty intoxicated. I was alone. I turned on the data on my phone and geo-tracked our location. Congo Forest. Yes, Congo Forest was what the tracker showed. This area is really dangerous, and we really should not have been there. I've heard scientists even claimed it to be inhabited by people who eat others, aka cannibals. Although, there's many who never believed that claim. I try to forget about hearing these claims where we were, but thoughts about dangerous animals in the forest didn't sit well with me. I don't think anybody ever lived in the forest, but my phone's GPS detected a house not far from our location, so I decided to get in the car and drive towards the house. I wasn't sure whether it was safe, but for the moment, I believed it was safer than being in the dark and thick brush. Now, it was nearly 10.30 p.m. when I walked my drunken friends into the house. Again, I was all alone, uncovered, as they say. I walked towards the entrance door. From the outside, the house seemed totally fine, but monstrously massive, at least until I noticed that I had not seen everything properly in the dark. As my eyes would adjust, I could see there was no ceiling. The house was dusty, cobwebs everywhere. Furniture remains were scattered on the floor, and a lot of questions ran through my head. But all were left unanswered, as I knew we needed to get to sleep. I was almost falling asleep when I heard something pass near the house. I assumed it was nothing. I mean, maybe I just hallucinated it. So I had stayed still and listened, hoping nothing would happen. And nothing did happen for about 15 minutes. But then I hear the noises again. This time it was real. I heard it very clearly. A loud roar outside almost like a scream, not far from the door. I remember how I felt. It was a feeling of confusion. I had no control of my thoughts of fears. At first, I thought it could be monkeys living in the forest, or other animals searching for food. But the myths running my mind about existing cannibals would not let me rest. I was not really scared until I heard loud and consistent banging sound on the outside walls of the house. It was getting louder and louder now. Every time I heard something, my heartbeat would beat louder and louder in my chest. I was still sitting and had not made a single move, being entirely still, kept looking around, making sure nothing was coming in. Yeah, I had the gun with me, but what was I shooting at? I had my phone with me too, but I could not even think to use it. Anyway, we were really far from help. Who could even rescue us? Finally, the noise ceased. I thought to myself, maybe the creature left, but I wasn't totally convinced of that. I was steadily looking to the wall where the banging had come from last. I decided to go ahead and reach for my phone, only to see the creature staring in at me. I couldn't see it clearly in the dim light from the moon, but it was standing right next to the glass door. It could see me. It was almost the same size as the door. Actually, it was taller, but standing back away from it. At first, I thought it was a human because of its eyes that seemed to be thinking and calculating. But then I noticed it had a hairy body. That made no sense at all. I thought it would attack immediately if I tried to reach or help or wake up my friends, so I never moved an inch. Taking a closer look at it made me notice that it had a very short snout. This wasn't a normal creature. This was something extraordinary. The more it stood looking at me without doing anything, the more courage I gained. And this time round, I moved. I stood still with my gun on my hand, ready for anything. The creature moved too. This time, I got a good look at its eyes, 
as the moonlight caught them and gave them this yellow ambery glow. All I could wonder was if it was ready to attack. My friends were all still passed out and had no idea what was maybe about to happen. And just then, this thing slowly moved backward and then in a flash seemed to vanish. For my friends, it was a normal night as they never woke up. But for me, it was a long night. I just lay there thinking about what I had just seen. I could not sleep and continued to listen for the creature to return. The next morning, I drove my friends back home safely. I never spoke to anyone about what I'd seen. I knew they would never believe me. Until now. So, I can't give you the best descriptions of what it is that I saw. But it did kind of look like a dog, standing upright on two legs. Could this be, even though I'm in Africa, could this be what you are seeing out there in the United States? I seriously doubt that it would be a werewolf. But what if these creatures are all over the world? I'll never shake that feeling that it gave me. I was working at a water treatment facility the year after I had graduated high school. Growing up in a small town in Georgia, there really weren't a lot of options if I did not want to go away to college or have a really long commute to a job that wouldn't pay you much better. I knew it was only going to be a temporary thing until I figured out what I wanted to do with my life. The job itself was pretty easy. Although it was mind-numbingly boring at times, I basically just sat at a desk with six monitors in front of me, looking for anything unusual, anything or anyone that could disrupt or contaminate the water reservoir. I almost always worked the night shift, which was okay with me because I was a night owl anyway, and I really enjoyed the peace and quiet of being there at night with fewer people. It was a cool night in December, right around midnight, December of 2014, as a matter of fact, which was about an hour after I started my shift. The only other person I had seen at work that night was a guy who I'll call Joe. He was a nice older guy who worked on the inspection and maintenance of the equipment. We had talked a little bit about the upcoming party, which would be really just a lot of us guys drinking way too much and being more annoying than they usually were at work. So, Joe was trying to convince me to come to the party. As one of only four or five women who worked there, I had already decided I was not going to this party. I was going to be leaving the job anyway after Christmas, and probably start classes at a community college. I was going to be leaving that job anyway after Christmas, to start classes at community college. I was ready to get out of this town, and that was the first step. So, I was browsing through a catalog of college courses, looking at the monitors periodically. There was nothing to see, at least unusual, except the occasional animal that would squeeze its way through the fence. This night, though, was different. At first, I thought I saw unusual amounts of movement, but the image looked kind of fuzzy. The cameras we used weren't the highest quality, and sometimes images faded in and out. Thanks management for being stingy about upkeep. I assumed it was probably Joe, doing a walking inspection. But then, when it got closer to the camera, I could see the image more clearly, and I lost it. It looked exactly like this. A dog head. But it was not a dog. Whatever it was, it was way too big to be a dog, and it was standing like a person, upright on two legs, with long arms dangling at its sides. It was big and bulky too, like a bodybuilder, or like the body of a gorilla. That's actually probably the best description I could think. A dog head on a big gorilla-like body. So I ran to the door, and just as I began to open it, Joe comes running toward me. His face is white, and he looked terrified. He nearly knocks me over. As soon as we got inside, he locks the door. I asked him what was out there, but he didn't say anything. Just silence. 
He stared out the window at the top of the door. The creature had walked slowly past us. And that's when I realized just how big this animal was. Easily eight or nine feet. Joe and I didn't say anything. We just stared at whatever this unknown thing was. An animal, a creature, a failed science experiment, something. But just then, it turned and ran, easily scaling the ten-foot barbed wire fence without nothing. I remember thinking I must be dreaming, and trying to pinch myself to wake up. But it wasn't a dream. Joe and I were finally able to talk a few moments later. We convinced ourselves that we must have seen a werewolf, a real living one. Not that that explanation made any sense or made us feel any better, but we immediately began searching the internet to see if we can find anything better to explain what we had seen. We found some pictures and descriptions that seemed to match what we had seen. Of course, there's no proof of what happened. We did not tell anyone else at first, because we knew nobody would believe us without proof. Him and I were both extremely apprehensive about sharing this encounter. I mean, if you tell anybody that you'd seen a living werewolf, you'd be laughed at. But we thought there'd be a video recording of it, asked to supervise it the next day. But as it turns out, because our management is so stingy, the cameras recorded over the tape every 12 hours, so we never got the proof. I left the job the next week, moved out of town a couple of years later. From what I heard, Joe still worked there until retiring last year. It turns out we have a few mutual connections outside of work. Him and I have actually kept in touch, even if nobody else believes us. We know what we saw that night. I firmly believe that even though it might not have been a werewolf, it was definitely a dogman. I was busy doing dishes late one night when I happened to glance at my window right above my kitchen sink. I had to adjust my eyes and squint at first because I wasn't exactly sure what I was seeing. Once I was able to make out what it was, the sight before me was truly terrifying and frightening. I thought it was a man at first, except he looked like a dog, had a long snout and pointed ears. They reminded me of a German Shepherd's ears, and I had a hard time understanding what I was looking at. But then, my eyes continued to observe the rest of its body. It had a torso like a man, with human-looking arms and legs. This thing was covered in hair or fur all over its body, and it appeared to be a dark brown or black color. It was one leg stepping over our old wooden fence with what appeared to be a dead cat in its arm. As soon as it lifts its leg over the fence, it quickly turned its head back toward the direction it was coming from, as if to make sure it wasn't being seen. I got goosebumps, bad. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. As soon as it lifted its leg over the fence, it quickly lifted up the other leg and was gone in a flash. I threw the dishes down and ran to go wake up my wife to let her know what I had seen. She said to me in a groggy state that I shouldn't stay up late anymore and do dishes because clearly I was seeing things. I still don't quite understand what it is that I saw, even though my wife doesn't believe me. I've looked on Google to see if I can find any images close to what I saw, and I guess it's a Rougarou. I believe that is French for werewolf, although I'm pretty sure that werewolves are fictional. But I can't deny what I saw that night, so I really don't know what it was. It was so scary, and so human-like. The only dog-like thing about it was that it was covered in fur, and that it had a large head of a dog. I'm convinced that I saw a wolfman of some kind. I'm just thankful that it never turned back and looked at me. If it wasn't for the full moon shining at the right place during the right time, and having virtually no clouds, and having not looked up when I did, I would have never ever known it was there. It was maybe only 30 to 40 feet away from the window. I used to live in a neighborhood in eastern Pennsylvania for about 12 and a half years. 
Pennsylvania is the witchcraft capital of the world, so all sorts of freaky stuff goes on. For the record, this neighborhood was a little bit smaller. We all kind of knew each other. I lived in that neighborhood on and off for 12 years, but we had what we'd like to call the neighborhood creeper. We all kept tabs on what this thing was, but we believe it was some sort of monster. Look, I know that sounds silly coming right off the bat, but let me explain. This creature would steal our cats and dogs, and it tried to break into our houses. Only sometimes, though. It wasn't around all the time, and there never seemed to be a rhyme or reason for it showing up. But it was primarily active during the early morning hours and at nighttime. It would come and go, no matter what season or month. Unfortunately, I got the chance to see this thing nearly face to face through my window. It had a very scary wolf-like face, pointed ears, and very human-like hands, but they were pressed up against the glass, so I couldn't see them as much as I would want to, or not want to. Judging by the size of this animal, it could have very easily just pushed my window through and gotten to me, but it didn't. It was like it was reminding me that I was its prey, and it wanted to keep me in my cage until it was ready to feast. I know deep down that this thing could catch me and put me out of my house and eat me if it wanted to. There is a very old sweet lady that lived just a few houses down from me. God rest her soul. She passed away a few years before I moved out, but she described it as looking like a werewolf. She said it was black and gray in color and had very large teeth. She said it would always steal her cats and eat them. She was one of those elderly ladies that kind of let it go with having cats. I mean, her cats were always having kittens and having more and more kittens. She never really took care of them, and it really got out of hand. I guess you can say she was the crazy old cat lady, but she wasn't a crazy lady, she was actually a very sweet loving lady. Anyway, maybe that's one of the reasons why this thing came around. There was free food supply. I'm not exactly sure. Most people in the neighborhood were terrified from what I recall, and nobody tried shooting at it or calling the cops because, come on, what are they going to do? Last I heard when I moved out, there were still activity because I still keep in contact with some of my neighbors. I had developed close relationships with some of them, especially the ones close to me, and to my knowledge, this thing still lurks around the neighborhood from time to time. To answer some of your questions, to my knowledge, it has never broken into anybody's house, although it has attempted. It's never attacked or hurt anybody, other than household pets. But it has scared the pants off many. The neighborhood kind of goes down on an unofficial lockdown at night, and really don't see anybody out after dark. It's strange because you can go a few neighborhoods over, and people are out walking their dogs at night. But in the evening, not in this neighborhood, I'm glad to have been gone, and honestly, I have no desire to ever return. I was up in the Pacific Northwest and hunting during doe season. I had my tree stand all set up, and I got up there early as I could, waiting for deer. Luckily for me, I was on a friend's property, in which he owned about 30 plus acres. I much preferred hunting on private property, so I didn't have to try and compete with a kill. What happened to me this day made me take a hiatus from deer hunting. So I'm sitting there, waiting in the stand, and I hear something big coming at me in the woods. My first instinct was that it was maybe a large buck, just because of the large sounds and how fast it was traveling. I looked off in the distance where the noise was coming from and just out of the trees came this massive wolf-looking creature on all fours that just seemed to be passing by. It walked off up into this small hill and vanished again in the trees. I was speechless. I didn't know creatures like that existed out here in the woods of Oregon and decided it was time to hang things up for a while. Not my story, but a friend's information that I am sharing I grew up and lived in Colorado for a long time before moving out of state. I have several close friends that are Arapaho and have a lot of stories about encounters with creatures they dealt with years back. 
not they specifically. Stories passed down from their tribe. I don't know if there are any other major native tribes other than the Arapaho that primarily lived in the Colorado region, but it's the only ones I'm aware of. Many probably know that the Rocky Mountains hold a lot of mysteries. Some of the stories that were shared with me was information dating back to the early 19 and 1800s. Fur trappers and tribesmen alike were captured and devoured alive by these werewolf creatures. I can't remember what the Arapaho called them, but they had a name for these things. Trying not to convolute the situation, these same werewolf-like creatures would wage war with these other beings that we know called Bigfoot. The Arapaho also had a name for them, but I can't remember that either. These werewolf creatures would storm into the villages at night, steal children and smaller little kids. They were stealing these little children to eat. They would send the tribe warriors out to go hunt these creatures down, and when the tribesmen would find them, or what was left of them, it was just bones, far, far away in the nest of those creatures. Many tribesmen and fur trappers alike died at the hands of these beings. Bow and arrows and muzzleloaders were no match for a nine-foot-tall beast of the night with superhuman strength. Going back to the werewolf creature waging war with Bigfoot-like creatures, it was believed by my friend's tribe that they were waging war over who got to eat and prey upon the tribe. Many of the tribe's fiercest warriors at the time witnessed the battles between these two creatures, and oftentimes would result in either both creatures dying or leaving the battle severely injured. The creatures, not the warriors. My friend told me that his tribe describes these creatures as much taller and larger than some of their greatest warriors, and gray to dark gray in color. The Bigfoot-like beings of the tribe were talked about were also very hostile, and would come to capture and steal their women and children at night as well. It was a dangerous environment, and a constant territorial war between the Arapaho, Bigfoot, and Dogman. There are different sectors of the Arapaho tribe, and one particular tribe, or village, moved around in fear that these creatures would keep stalking them. It became a relentless pursuit, until the village was successful in killing a small handful of these werewolf creatures, severing their heads and putting them on spears, placing them all outside the village to ward off other dangers. Their claim was that these creatures lived in this large underground den deep in the mountain's side that they would drag the captured children, women, and tribesmen to and eat them. From what I was told, this den was never expunged because they couldn't match the firepower of these creatures, only ward them off from their own territory, which means that this den is probably alive and well today, and is still very active from the sounds of all the other dogmen encounters in the state. I'm sure it is one of the many dens. Just the thought of that sends shivers down my spine. There's a couple times that tribesmen had ventured into this same den when there were no other dogmen in it, mainly during the day, and would find tons upon tons of human bones and skulls. I thought you might find these stories interesting. Feel free to share them with your audience if you would like to. One night, I got up from sleep and was leaving my bedroom to go get some water downstairs. I saw something behind the curtains in my living room that looked big and black. I could see the shape and it resembled a strange werewolf silhouette standing close by the door when suddenly it turned onto its hands on all fours and ran off towards my neighbor's house in the opposite direction. I was scared out of my mind just seeing this tall thing right outside my house. My curtains are so thin and the moon cast a perfect silhouette of this thing. I wanted to scream my lungs out. My neighbor is a strange guy who has been a paranormal researcher for years. I have never taken him seriously, but maybe I should. Although I don't think he will ever believe me if I told him a werewolf charged at his house. But there is no denying this creature really exists, and it scared the hell out of me. The next day while I was walking around the neighborhood, I saw strange shadows lurking around during my night walk. Gave me the creeps, so I came home early. I couldn't help but shake the feeling that these things are real. After I went back home, I kept thinking about it more and more, 
and finally said to myself, Did... did I see a werewolf last night? And I went online to research it. There is a whole community of people online who share the same beliefs of having an actual werewolf sighting, which surprised me. A lot of people that claim they saw them, with having near accurate descriptions as to what I saw that night. Now, there are so many places online where people like to talk about their encounters. Vic Cundiff's forum, website. I know about the North American Dogman Project. Your channel. There's so many. There's just something about watching a Dogman encounter on YouTube now that feels so validating. I feel like I'm not crazy. I know I may be older and getting gray, but I'm not insane. These things are real. I had taken my time to set up my hunting camp on early October in preparation for deer season. On October 4th, 2017, I had heard a strange howling outside of my trailer. It sounded like a wolf howl, except much larger. I thought it might be from a larger alpha male, so I looked out the window out of curiosity, and what I saw truly scared me. It looked to me like a large coyote walking around on two legs, baring its teeth as it walked and paced around the trailer. Then, it did something that made my blood run cold. It quickly jumped into the woodline where I could not see it. Puzzled and afraid, I quickly looked around to see where it had gone, and not even a split second later, it charged out of the woods and smacked right into the travel trailer. It knocked me off my bench and I fell back, dazed. This thing possessed superhuman strength and nearly toppled over my trailer. I felt like a semi-truck ran into us. I jumped up to grab my gun, but the only thing I had near me was my loaded 12 gauge and it was ready to go. I picked it up, cocked it, and I was ready to go all Arnold Schwarzenegger on this thing. I kicked the door open and I had the shotgun up on my shoulder, ready to fire. I didn't see it anywhere. The woods around me were silent. It was eerie. It was like being in a horror movie where you know something bad is about to happen. I slowly scanned my surroundings and crept around the trailer to see if I can find it. I was going to fill it full of slugs. I made it all the way around the trailer, 360 degrees, scanning every nook and cranny, but I never saw anything. Nothing. No tracks. No eye shine. The spot that it impacted right where I was looking out the window, there was nothing. No footprints, no dents in the trailer even, and even though it felt like I got hit by a car. But this awful stench lingered in the air. It smelled like blood and rotting meat. And that's when I started to question if I'm just hallucinating or I'm going crazy. And that's when I heard this nasty god-awful howl, growl, scream that came from close by in the woods. I ran back in the trailer and decided I would just be better off holding up in there, and if this thing decided to break in, it's going to meet its end with a couple of slug shells. Safe to say I didn't sleep that night, and I promptly moved to a different area the very next morning. I was only 15 years old at the time. I'm 27 now. At the time, I was going to high school like any other normal teenager, and back beyond our house was this huge area that was fenced off. The fencing was tall wooden fences, and I believe the neighbor or someone or something owned it, but to my knowledge it was just an empty field. Beyond that was woods, and then I think it went to another neighborhood a ways after that. This fence went right up against my backyard, and then paralleled the entire sidewalk all the way down a couple of blocks. On the other side of this fence, was this giant field that we would sometimes hop to get across the neighborhood. And then on the other side of that field was a totally different neighborhood. If you hopped the fence to the left, you would be in the woods. In front of you would be the next neighborhood. And to the right of you would be our neighborhood. My friends and I only hopped this fence a couple of times, but 
there was really nothing back there. It did look shady though, like I'm sure people bought drugs back there or did heroin. I did actually see some trash in a homeless person's tent back there once. Who knows? But this was in the winter time, and every morning when my father would drive me and my sister to school, we would hear these horrible noises and screams that sounded like they were on the other side of the fence. My sister and I would always hear it, and it creeped her and I out. My dad was in denial about it, but it was clear as day, and it was every winter morning. It was loud, and I was not the only one in the neighborhood to hear it. It wasn't until around my senior year of high school that I befriended one of the neighbors on the far side of our neighborhood, who also just happened to be a registered hunter. One day, we got on the topic somehow of the noise I had heard a few years back, and he confirmed that there was indeed a strange creature that he had seen living back there, and that I was not crazy. He said this thing was tall, black, had pointy ears, and resembled a wolf. It nearly tried to break down the fence and get into his house until he fired a couple shots a few years ago. He hasn't seen much of it in the last year, but it still comes around from time to time. He believes whatever this animal was migrates through the area through the winter time. There's times that he has heard scratching on the fence, like somebody pressing and dragging a bunch of knives onto the fence board early in the morning, the same time in the morning that I had heard the howls years ago. It's very strange. After I graduated, I moved off to college and moved the heck out of Dodge, and now live states away with a new life, new career, and new girlfriend. Luckily, I don't have to deal with any of that now. My wife and I, just this last fall, were on our way, driving up to British Columbia from Oklahoma and our small motorhome. We were making our way along the highway at nighttime when a large black dog stepped out and crossed the road quickly. This large dog was walking erect on two legs, and I would estimate the height at over eight to nine feet tall. It had very thick fur and had tall pointed ears. Because of the darkness, it was hard to get a total estimation of its features, but it did have amber glowing eyes that seemed to glow unnaturally. When your headlights hit an animal and they have that eye glow, this animal had that, but without even having any headlights in its eyes. It quickly crossed the road and then looked over at us mid stride. Then it was gone across to the other side of the road. It happened so fast and so close, I was afraid we were going to hit it. There was no other traffic present at this time and no really spot to pull over. It scared my wife more than it scared me, but I still get the chills just thinking about it and describing it to you. It was 1999 and I was driving east of Charleston, Missouri. I was driving later on at night and I had pulled over to put some water in my coolant tank. Quick note, I had been having some serious issues with that truck that I was driving at the time because it was overheating. For whatever reason, I had neglected to get the proper coolant for it. so. I would literally be carrying around jugs of water with me and stopping every 10 or so miles to be pouring it in there just to keep the engine from overheating. Dumb, I know. So this was one of my routine pullovers to the side of the road to quickly put some water into the coolant. My engine was really hot, so I think I was trying to let my truck cool down because it was starting to get really, really hot and the engine was nearing smoking. I lifted up the hood and poured in the water and sat there and waited. I thought that while I'd give the engine a minute to cool down, I would take this opportune moment to have a cigarette break. As I'm lighting my cigarette, I hear this high-pitched, long, drawn-out echoing sound. Then I begin to make it out as a howl of some sort. This makes my skin crawl, and I begin to feel on edge. I try to brush it off and finish my cigarette, but this eerie feeling crept over me. Out of the corner of my eye, as my eyes began adjusting to the darkness, I can make out the outline of a figure standing upright across the road, just beyond the trees a bit. It was very tall, taller than me, I'm sure. As I can make out the outline more and more, it resembled that of a dog, or so I thought, but the ears were very long and pointed, 
and the body seemed very broad, like a bodybuilder. It began moving and swaying side to side, as if trying to get a better look at me. That's the vibe I got. I didn't know what I was looking at, but I was seriously getting creeped out. I remember thinking, well, that's enough for me. I threw my cigarette down, stomped on it, closed my hood, and jumped back in my truck. I wasn't going to wait around another second. I got out of there and just got to a nearby gas station and finally bought some coolant. I don't know what kind of animal I was dealing with that night or why I felt those feelings, but I do know that because of that situation, it's taught me to really be prepared. In my case, it means not being neglectful and making sure your vehicle has plenty of coolant, which I stocked up on and quit being lazy about. A few years ago, I went out with a couple of my buddies to do some bass fishing at night. I'm not going to tell you where, because I don't want anybody to listen to this and to think they're brave and to go try and find this thing. Nobody should try and find what we saw. It needs to be left and forgotten about. What we saw came straight out of a nightmare. When we were fishing, we began hearing a loud crashing sound coming off far to the left of the woods when my friend shined the spotlight right in the spot that we heard the noise coming from. And lo and behold, this monstrosity is standing there. A creature with the height of around eight feet tall and covered in dark brown to black hair at the very edge of the tree line, fully lit up by the spotlight. It had its large hand on the side of the tree and was watching us menacingly. This thing looked like a flipping werewolf out of the movie The Howling. It looked evil. It gave us a scowl, or at least that's what the expression on its face resembled. Then it stepped out of the tree line and began walking towards us. My friend who was already screaming and panicking after seeing it when he shined the light on it was now screaming and running, leaving behind everything, as we were all leaving our equipment behind. The creature behind us started to pick up the pace and began grunting and letting out a panting noise as if to let us know it was giving chase. We made it back to the main trail and then back to our truck in one piece, and it seemed that this creature had stopped following us somewhere along the way. We were terrified. One of us had to go back the following morning to retrieve our equipment, which was left untouched. Still, one of the scariest things I've ever been through in my life. Hi, I saw a dogman, a black wolf face, standing up on two feet, hunched over, about six feet tall, standing straight up. The dogman would have been about seven feet tall. I am five foot nine, so I could tell after I went back about where its head was compared to mine on the trees. I am a registered nurse, so I am used to weighing people and asking their height, etc. It was tall and skinny with a hump or mane on its neck. It was standing slightly turned to its left, my right. The hair was short, smooth, well-groomed, like a beagle or a Labrador dog. Its eyes were white, like they glowed or self-illuminated. At 3 p.m. on a hot sunny afternoon, 90 degrees, August 20th, 2019. I was in Freedom, north of Pittsburgh, about 30 minutes. I am a Bigfooter, ghost hunter, UFO alien pursuer, paranormal investigator, took classes with cryptid director of the USA at Eastern Gateway Community College in Ohio. The dogman held its paws up to its chest, limp-wristed style, with the elbows sticking out. It looked uncomfortable holding its elbows out. It did not move. It just stood there. I was in a rural area outside of town. Reports of Bigfoot activity in the area. I am slightly telepathic, psychic, whatever you want to call it. I had a feeling that Bigfoot had been in the area recently on the property. So I said a prayer. I come in peace and light and love of God. I mean, no harm or disrespect. Please show me a sign of your presence or show yourself. Please do not hurt or scare me. 
Later when I am leaving in my car, driving down the gravel road to a paved road, there was the dogman standing by the side of the road, about three car lengths from the road in the bushes and trees. I could not see it from the waist down due to the bushes. Normal dog paws, like a pet dog. They were not typical dogman hands, like a raccoon or a human with hair. Mouth closed the whole time, which was weird. It was not panting due to the heat of 90 degrees. It was next to a small stream. Was it drinking water? Did it hear my prayer to Bigfoot and show up? It was in the shade of a grove of trees, so the white eyes were not sun glare. It was really weird. I felt like it was waiting for me. I backed my car up a few feet to look at it from a slightly different angle, went forward a bit, backward, forward. The last time I went backwards, it seemed like it stood up a tiny bit straighter. The first time it moved. Scared the crap out of me. I floored my car and drove out of there. I forgot to take a picture. I was so mad at myself. When I got home and realized I forgot to take a photo, now I understand why a witness to a strange encounter forgets to take a picture. I was in shock, disbelief, perplexed, happy, scared, mixed up emotions. I thought that it was a Bigfoot at first when I was driving down the gravel road and I saw the big black creature standing there. I thought it was a Bigfoot until I saw the ears. Then I pulled my car up in front of it and I was like, what? That's a dogman. That's not a Bigfoot. I actually was kind of disappointed it wasn't a Bigfoot. I was told by a psychic it was a skinwalker. Native American warrior. They want to be remembered and not forgotten. She said leave a Native American offering of tobacco, whiskey, and apples. She also said to pour salt around my house so it doesn't look in my windows at night. Pray to God, Jesus, to protect me. She said I will see it again. Another psychic I know said that they are interdimensional and she has seen a dogman twice not too far away from where I saw that dogman, but on the other side of the Ohio River in Hopewell, Center Township, Pennsylvania. The dogman I saw was in Freedom, Pennsylvania, which if I drove from that location, I saw the dogman to the road the psychic saw it on twice. It would take about 20 minutes. This happened just last month. I'm a broker for a local real estate firm around the area. I'm going to keep my identity concealed in case I risk anyone I know or work for hearing this. You know how things just happen to leak out. The area I operate in is a very small old farm town. With that brings a lot of the retirement community and people looking to escape insane housing prices from larger cities all around. So they come here. The terrain is high desert, lots of shrubbery, but still lots of pine. We got rattlesnakes, tons of deer, skunks, the whole gamut. Lots of cattle, lots of agriculture, lots of farming, you name it. The plus side is there are many properties out there for those looking to escape for the folks who wish to remain out of town, secluded in complete privacy. That's what my story is about. I had gotten a call from a lady and her husband about wanting to view an older manufactured home that was an owner carry contract and they were interested in viewing the property. The property itself sits out near a bunch of timberland owned by the timber company and sits on a hilly five acres. The property has been on the market for some time now, I want to say a year, so you can imagine the owner was more than thrilled to have somebody interested in seeing it even if they didn't exactly have the 20% down they would need, the owner would be willing to work with them. All the more reason for them to come out and see it. After speaking with the lady on the phone, we agreed upon meeting at the property the following morning. The following morning came, a beautiful sunny day in June, and I made my way there. It's off a major interstate, about 10 minutes down a winding gravel dirt road and near the very end, up a small hill tucked away in the trees. As I'm pulling in the driveway, I see what clearly looks like somebody in a large werewolf costume or a Hollywood prop just above the back part of the house in the trees. It was there clear as day. I glanced at it and kind of chuckled to myself that the neighbors must have stuck up a prop 
for fun and giggles. I pulled into the house, not thinking anything about it, and gave the folks a call. Fortunately, there was enough cell service to get a hold of her. They were running a tad bit behind and would be there within 10 minutes. No problem. I sat in my car and waited, double checking I had everything I needed to give them if this was a property they wanted to pursue. Fast forward a little to them showing up. Lovely couple. We took about 45 minutes in total, checking out the whole property, the inside, the outside, you name it. When we got to the outside and were walking around, I immediately noticed the spot that I saw what I thought was an elaborate costume or Hollywood prop was now gone. It made me feel funny. Nobody is around us. The nearest neighbors were down the road and they wouldn't have been able to get over here without us seeing them. Besides, why would they be walking around in a large werewolf costume on a hot day in June? That's when the husband, who was walking in front of me, up the incline, exclaimed and asked me if there was large wild dogs living out here. He was pointing down at the ground, right where I had seen the prop beforehand. In the dirt were these incredibly large dog prints, larger than my hand, I had never seen prints so big before. He says to me, wow, the neighbors around here must have some big dogs. They just continued on as if all was normal, exploring up the hillside as the property reached out further and further. I couldn't help but feel so shaken about it, although I hid it. After the couple came back down, they spent a few more minutes taking quick last minute looks all around the premise. They ended things on a, well, we'll discuss it more and get back to you if this is something we want to purchase. They drove off and I was going to give the owner a call and to let him know how it went. Right as I'm pulling up his contact info on my phone, the nearby neighbor comes walking up to me from the road and starts a conversation with me about 30 feet away. He tells me if there's people moving in. I explained that I just showcased this property to that couple. He was disappointed they left when they did. He wanted to meet them, thinking they were going to be his new neighbors. That's when he started talking about large wolves in the area. That caught me off guard. I had to ask him what he was talking about. He was so calm and dismissive about the idea of giant wolves that walked on two legs. I asked him, you mean like a werewolf? He denied that, but said these were just large predatory animals that roamed the area. They've made several attempts to get inside his house and go after his cats and dogs. He wanted to thoroughly inform his new neighbors of this nuisance around the neighborhood if this is where they were going to settle down at. He didn't leave much room for conversation, just kind of walked back to where he came as he waved and told me his goodbyes. The whole thing was just weird. I got back in my truck and drove away. The whole time I'm thinking that son of a gun He's pulling a prank on me about the whole wolf thing. But my mind kept going to those prints in the dirt. There were no other prints. No boot, no feet, just extremely large dog prints. They were indented into the dirt too, pretty heavily. There's no way those could have just been put there easily. And they were fresh. I might be a wimpy girl, but I do know a thing or two about tracking and animal tracks, considering my daddy hunted a ton around this area, and I grew up here. People think that because I'm a woman, that I don't know nothing, but I do. You can take it or leave it. He might have very well been messing with me, but I don't know. The entire thing just felt so weird. If there is anything else that gives this wolf thing grounds to be real, is that I have some Native American friends from the surrounding areas. All of them have told me horrific tales about being stalked and attacked by what they believed to be a Bigfoot, each one of them, on multiple occasions. I have no knowledge if there is any truth to them. Then again, I don't go around asking people if they've had any weird encounters, so I don't really know. This might have been nothing, but I can't be 100% sure.
Back in 1992, I was visiting the lovely state of Michigan for a close family friend's wedding. It was summer and everything is incredibly lush and full of life. The wedding went by and we got to the best part, the reception, where many drank and partied far into the night. I had struggled with alcohol a lot growing up, so I was one of the only few sober individuals there at the time, besides some other apostolic elders who were pretty anti-alcohol and drinking altogether. People were starting to leave and head home, when clear as day, we all heard the most disturbing, loud howl yell. It was so, so loud that you could feel the vibrations from it in your chest and ears. It hurt that it was so loud. This got everyone's attention, and we all looked over in the direction that it came from, which was the heavily forested area just beyond the reception area outside. Many started looking panicked and confused not knowing what the sound was or where exactly it came from. People started whispering and talking in hushed, panicked tones. It didn't quite sound like a human, but had a quality to it that sounded remotely human, just much more visceral. It was like mixing a wolf howl with a person yelling and making that very guttural. My friend, the groomsman, and his newly bride the color had drained from their faces completely. I knew then that what we all heard wasn't normal. We weren't crazy. We knew it. There was easily still 60 people minimum at this reception at the time. For those that were drinking, I bet it sobered them up real quick. I still think about this happening and it gives me the shivers. I've grown up in areas where I've heard wolves howl and I've heard coyotes plenty of times. This didn't sound like either. Wolves and coyotes don't also have that guttural quality to it, like this did. The volume alone was unnatural, and the size of the animal would have to be immensely large for it to have that kind of volume. I can only imagine the lung size of whatever animal made this howl. I got a really interesting story for you. So interesting that in fact, I honestly thought I was having a joke played on me at the time. This happened back in the early 1980s when at the time, I was fishing at a secret location on a creek that only I really knew about. This was in northern Michigan, so funny enough at the time, I had just seen the movie American Werewolf in London like a week or two prior before this happened. This is the major proponent to why I believe or believed at the time that I was being pranked. I got to my fishing spot very early right about sunrise and spent the better half of the entire day there. It was probably about lunchtime because I had just gotten done eating a turkey sandwich and the sun was directly overhead. I noticed some movement coming across the embankment that caught my eye. At first it was the brush and bushes moving around, but then there became more and more movement. This led me to believe that it was a larger animal, maybe a bear since I know there are bears up here, I've just never seen one in the flesh. Now I started paying a lot more attention to the movement than I did my line in the water. Then I saw it. Two long cropped ears. Then the entire head and the upper body popped up out of the brush looking down to the west at something. I was caught in a state of surprise at what I was looking at. This looked to be somebody in an elaborate werewolf costume. I kind of chuckled to myself thinking, wow, one of my friends must have gone to great lengths to follow me here secretly, getting into a suit to try and scare me. But there were just some things that didn't fully line up with that way of thinking. This animal was intently looking down at something behind the bushes that I just could not see. Then I saw it crouch down again with the only tops of its ears poking out. After about a few more minutes or seconds, I don't remember. It fully stood up, looking still and looking down. Its focus was intent on something. At the time, I don't think I was buying it, and I thought it was still one of my friends, and they were waiting for the perfect opportune moment to try and scare me. So I entirely dropped my rod, stood up, and yelled out to this thing that I thought was my friend at the time. Hey, asshole! 
and as quick as you can snap your fingers, this thing turned its head, looked right at me. It stared at me for about a second or two. Very curious expression on its face before jumping 20 feet in the air into the tree line and disappeared. My jaw about dropped to the ground. In that moment, my pants became 20 pounds heavier and I should have brought a new pair of jeans with me. That, my friends, was a tough pill to swallow. I had seen a real living animal that resembled that of a werewolf. What are the odds of that happening just a couple of weeks after I saw a werewolf movie? I packed my things up and I left in fear that this thing would return, possibly with more of them. I kept trying to tell myself, no, this isn't possible. These things don't exist. I was just seeing things and I was just having a joke played on me. No man in a werewolf costume, I don't care how big or small, can jump 20 feet up in the air and into the trees like this thing did at the speed that it did. It was completely unnatural. I don't know if dogmen or werewolves truly exist, but I do know for sure that there are unknown animals out there living among us. When I was a little boy, my father acquired a rather large property from an older gentleman who used to trophy hunt a lot in his younger days. Along with the property, he was giving my father all of his prized trophies that came with it because he was getting older, much older, and got tired of lugging them all around with him and really wanted to start minimalizing his living. He just wanted to find the right tenant who would appreciate all of his years of love and labor. As a little boy, I do remember all of the trophies. Everything from large exotic bison, bucks, African exotic animals, alligators, I can go on and on. Things that would make you squirm. Then, he had a whole room dedicated to skulls that he had found during his time hunting. The one that I wanted to talk to you about was this colossal sized canine skull that had far oversized canines. The other unorthodox part of the skull is that all the teeth besides the canines were like needle pins, razor sharp, and even with the aging and wear and tear of the skull, they were still very much intact and sharp as ever. The skull was larger than a cow skull, and my dad, nor the older gentleman who sold him the place, really knew where it came from. He had forgotten the location that he found it in, but thinks it was up in the Rocky Mountains, if he remembered correctly. Growing up, I always thought it could have been a dire wolf skull, but the teeth never made sense to me. Isn't a dire wolf just a larger version of a wolf? I don't think they had exaggerated canines or razor bladed teeth. This thing didn't even have molars, just razor teeth. It was not until my later 20s that I got into cryptozoology that I started to realize that maybe that the skull was from something much more. Well, my father sold everything in that house and then sold the property a while back, so we lost all ownership of everything that was there. To this very day, I kick myself for not taking that skull, but it surely was incredible. I might just be overplaying it here, but, and hyping up the issue, when there's nothing really there. I can't guarantee that this was a dogman skull, but in my heart of hearts, that's what I want to believe. It doesn't match up with any other known canine skull that I've ever seen and the size alone was abnormally large. I believe these creatures are really out there, but I've never seen one. Maybe whoever acquired that skull and the property has a potential connection and one foot in the door to actually proving these things do exist. There might still be DNA on that thing, and maybe, just maybe, I could track down whoever bought the property. I've already submitted my encounter to several other big YouTubers like Swamp Dweller, Darkness Prevails, and that's just to name a couple, and I wanted to share it with you. I'm almost certain that there is a dogman, or a small pack of dogmen, living out by where I live. There is a large field that is empty along the main road that I drive to leave this area. It's probably about 15 acres of just large field with no development on it filled to the brim with tall grass and even a small pond. I believe it's full of rabbits. We see them all over the place. Every spring and summer, they are everywhere. 
They're constantly dead on the side of the road, and I'm always seeing them hopping around. That's not counting all the other little animals we have, like possums, skunks, raccoons, all your typical little American animals that live out here in the boonies. I truly believe that I have seen several of these dogwin creatures. I've had several sightings, and it's usually all in the early morning or evening time when it's dusky outside. They resemble very closely a German Shepherd with very pointy ears walking around on two legs. I've never seen them running, only walking, but they are out visible in the field without a care in the world to whoever drives by and sees them. I know the road that it's close to isn't necessarily a busy road, but people still go up and down it. I'm sure I'm not the only person to have witnessed what I have, and I firmly believe that they are dogmen. The only time I've ever seen more than one was in the early morning a few weeks back when I saw a really tall one, and then a smaller one next to it following after. They're always headed in the opposite direction that I'm in, or they seem like they're headed back into the woods. I don't know if they are here seasonally, or if they're here for food, because I know with all the rabbits around, there is plenty to eat. There's almost like an infestation of rabbits. I've never gone adventuring into that empty, undeveloped land, so I don't know how many hollows and little dens there are full of rabbits, but I'm sure it's plentiful if there's that many dogmen around. From what I know, the woods surrounding that undeveloped plot of land are state game land or state owned, and it goes on for miles and miles up against several of the rolling hills and mountains behind us. I'm not sure if anybody really lives back there or there's really any other property development, but to my knowledge, there is not. This would equip a dogman with plenty of places to hide and thrive without ever being discovered by a human. A little too close to home if you ask me, but I've never seen or had any issues with them around my house. Now that I think about it, I'm honestly surprised because I have quite a few cherry trees, apple trees, apricot trees, and even pear trees, and I know they are generally attracted to those things, or maybe just attracted to what kind of prey those things bring. You wouldn't even begin to believe the high amounts of deer and other animals those trees pull in, and that means my property is probably just a ticking time bomb to be pulling these creatures in. I fear that once the rabbits and other small animals have been eaten up, these things, creatures, will move on. I only live right up the road, a couple of miles, which is practically a stone's throw away for these things. I do feel fortunate that I am very well versed and knowledgeable about cryptids and dogmen, especially that I feel equipped to deal with the situation if it ever does arise. I have plenty of firepower, and I could even put bars on my windows if needed. I've heard too many horror stories of people dealing with these things who don't expect it, and I refuse to be a statistic who is found dead, or my body is missing, and only blood to be found. I will fight to the death if I have to, but for now, I'm just going to keep my distance and respect that they are here, in hopes they will never find me, and leave me alone.